Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Advanced Placement AP Information Evening. Today is Thursday, September 17th at 7 p.m. This presentation is brought to you by the Guidance and University Counseling Department at Crestwood Preparatory College. Good evening, everyone, and thank you again for joining us tonight as we learn more about the AP program at Crestwood. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Catherine Decatta, and I'm head of the department here at CPC. I'm also joined by two other fantastic colleagues in the office. We have Miss Christine Somerville, who works with our junior and intermediate students in grade seven to 10, and Mr. Jeff Mitz, who works with our senior students in grade 11 and 12. Um, all of the counselors in the office are very well versed on the AP program, so if you have any questions after this presentation about any of the information that comes up, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Our emails are listed here on the screen. Tonight's presentation won't be too long in length, and on the slide here to my left, we have a breakdown of all of the topics I will be covering this evening, including a general breakdown of what the AP program is for those who have no idea, the AP courses that we offer at Crestwood, our classes, assignment, and mark policy for those students who decide to participate. A quick note on self-study courses for any courses that we don't offer at Crestwood. A breakdown of how students can actually gain post-secondary credit from participating in this program. I will go uh, very quickly into the contract and the cost that um, is mandatory at Crestwood, the major dates and deadlines, the next steps, so those tasks that you should do after this presentation is over. And then finally, I'll leave you with some really great helpful resources and online links that you can visit after this presentation if you'd like to find out just some more information. The Advanced Placement or AP program at Crestwood is offered in coordination with the College Board organization, and it provides an enrichment opportunity for Crestwood students, generally in grade 12, some in grade 11 or 10, to participate in a university level course. And should they be successful on their AP exams in May of next year, then they have the opportunity to apply that as a first year credit to their university studies when they attend post-secondary. Now I'm going to talk about how the AP program functions at Crestwood. So we don't actually stream our AP courses here in school in the sense of having an AP designated section of students versus the core students who aren't engaged in the AP program. They are amalgamated into one. And once our student registration is closed and we do have a roster of students who would like to participate in the program, those students are identified to their instructor and their instructor sets up an extra meeting time schedule where they're able to cover the content. So this could be morning, lunch, and after school or some combination of all three, including the option to do Zoom sessions to be able to accommodate all of those students who are at home and at school. And during these extra time or during these extra meetings, the students will work with a teacher to cover all of the AP curriculum that isn't naturally covered in the course. And this is done through, again, additional assignments, tests, tasks, and homework that will allow them to prepare adequately for their AP exams in May. So now I'm going to talk about why students might be attracted to the program and why they should engage and sign up for the AP um, Advanced Placement Program at Crestwood. So number one and right off the bat, students have the opportunity to participate and earn a first year university level credit while they're in their final year of high school. And if they are successful on their AP exam and earn that credit, they have ability to go into their post-secondary studies with one course already under their belt. And then they can take a bit of a reduced course load in their first year as they make that transition. Um, number two, it's really great enriched and enhanced preparation for students who want to make that jump to post-secondary and it really eases the transition as it prepares them for the workload um, and the style of learning that is required in university. Um, number three, studies have shown that students who engage in the AP program actually are able to better refine their writing skills and prepare their writing skills for university in their first year. And then finally, um, Students who engage in the AP program are really allowing themselves to stand out in the international admissions process. So for those students who are looking to apply to the United States, to the United Kingdom, the rest of Europe, um, Asia, and beyond. As students continue to decide whether the AP program is right for them, it is important to distinguish how AP courses are different from the regular courses offered at Crestwood. Number one, AP courses are more challenging as the subject level is more advanced. It is going to be on par to a first year university level course. 
And number two, the course load is going to be more demanding and students will be required to put in more time and energy than students who are just participating in the regular core classes that follow the Ontario curriculum at Crestwood. As students and families continue to assess whether the AP program is right um, for their son or daughter or student, I encourage you to look at this criteria here of what um, the ideal AP learner um, possesses before they engage in the program. So we are looking for students who are incredibly motivated and do well in a fast paced learning environment. We're looking for students who excel um, and are resilient in stressful and challenging situations. We are looking for students who are very interested in the subject matter and who have previously done very well or excelled um, in the topics that they are choosing to engage in with the AP program. And finally, we're looking for students who have a positive support system at home who can lean on a parent or a guardian um, in times of need and stress to help them navigate through um, the additional work that comes with the AP program. Next, I'm gonna take you through our AP courses and instructors we offer here at Crestwood. Number one, we offer 2D art and design taught by Ms. Belanger, and this is connected with the grade 12 visual arts course. Number two, we have AP American history taught by Mr. Masters, and this is offered through the grade 11 American history course. Number three, we have AP biology. This is taught by Mr. Podlovix, and this is connected with the grade 12 biology class. Number four, we have chemistry taught by Dr. Karish, and this is through the grade 12 chemistry course. Number five, we have computer science A taught by Ms. Postma, and this is through the grade 12 computer science class. And we have English language and composition taught by Mr. DeFranco, and this is connected to the grade 12 writer's craft course. Moving on, we also offer English Literature and Composition taught by Mr. Jell in coordination with the Literature Studies course in grade 12. We have European History taught by Mr. Masters in coordination with our grade 12 World History course. We have French Language and Culture taught by Ms. Rateau through the grade 12 French class. We have Microeconomics taught by Mr. Scott through the grade 12 Economics course. We have Physics 1 taught by Mr. Rollins through the Physics 12 class. And finally, we have Spanish Language and Culture taught by Mr. Johnstone in coordination with the grade 12 Spanish class. As I described on a previous slide, students who engage in the AP program will be required to participate in additional meetings and complete additional work outside of their regular class content that is covered in the Ontario curriculum. Each instructor in each AP course has a different bonus mark policy based on the attendance and time commitment and the additional assignments that need to be completed for the course. If a student successfully completes all of the additional meetings and assignments set out by their AP instructor, then they will be awarded bonus marks at the end of the year to their regular course at Crestwood. Even though Crestwood offers an extensive set of AP courses, there are still a number of courses and exams offered by the College Board that we do not host at school. I have included a link here on the screen that will bring you to the entire list of AP courses and exams offered by the College Board. This is where self-study comes into play. Self-studying refers to a student studying the material for an AP exam independently because the course is not offered at Crestwood. Each year, we do have a handful of students who take on this challenge, and the key to successfully self-studying for an AP exam is an abundance of high-quality review material and the ability to learn that material with minimal guidance or outside assistance, such as a tutor. AP exams are administered all around the world every year in May over a two-week period of time. The exams are approximately three hours long and are composed of multiple choice and free response questions. And for those students who are taking an AP language course, there are also spoken tasks associated with their final exams. AP exams are graded and marked out of a total of five. To further expand on the AP exams and grading system, students can once again receive a score between one and five after writing their exam. One meaning they really demonstrated limited knowledge of the content and they'll have no recommendation and they will not be able to achieve a first year credit in their post-secondary studies all the way up to five meaning the student did very well on their exam and they're extremely well qualified and versed in their AP content. On the right hand column of the chart on the slide you can see the college or university course grade equivalency and the expected mark a student can anticipate receiving should they send their scores to their post-secondary destination. 
After a student completes their AP exam and receives their final score, they can choose to send their AP exam results to the college or university they plan on attending in the upcoming school year. Each individual university is going to determine the scores to be accepted for credit, with most considering a minimum score of four to be eligible. We encourage students to contact their individual universities to find out um, more specific details about each school's AP policy, the courses they accept, and the minimum score they require to receive a first year credit. One specific note I want to draw everyone's attention to is McGill University's AP policy. While other schools around the world um, provide the option for students to provide their AP scores, McGill does not. McGill requires all students to disclose AP exams that they have written, as well as all the exams the students intend to write on their application to McGill, regardless of how well the student does. Therefore, if a student receives a one or two on their AP exam, they are still required to submit these results to the university. Each AP course at Crestwood costs $225. This includes courses run by our instructors and self-study courses. For the year, we have moved registration, contracts, and the payment process fully online, and you'll be able to access the form through the hyperlink below. Students who wish to participate in the AP program at Crestwood must complete the online registration and payment form by October 2nd, 2020. Once students are registered in the program, and if they would like to withdraw, they must do so by February 26, 2021 to receive a partial refund. Any student who drops their AP courses after this date will not receive a refund at all. And finally, the AP exams are running during the first two weeks of May in 2021, and those dates are May 3rd to 7th and May 10th to 14th. To access the online AP contract and payment portal, start by visiting the CPC EDSB page and then finding the Advanced Placement Group. Once the group loads, you will see here on the left hand side, we have our pinned items. And if you open up this first item, you will see the URL link to the online contract. Simply click on the URL and you'll be brought to the form. At the top of the form, you will notice a PDF download of tonight's presentation you can have for your notes, followed by the demographic section. You're going to start by filling out the Crestwood student's first and last name and corresponding email, and then you're going to designate what grade they're in. Next, you're going to list a parent or guardian contact, so first and last name, and then again, a corresponding email. The next section of the form will allow you to populate the AP order. So here you can add in all of the courses the student is interested in taking, and you're going to click the Save button after each course. Students who are interested in self-study can choose this option here at the bottom and then simply list the course they are interested in taking in the comment section. Once you've populated your order, you're going to add in the total number of courses. And then you're going to designate whether your son, daughter, or student has a documented learning disability and whether they'd like to apply for accommodations on their AP exam. The next part of the contract outlines the procedures and policies that a student must understand before engaging in an AP course. And I will go over these very quickly. So number one, the student needs to understand and declare that there is additional work associated with the AP course and there may be self-directed study and review associated with their learning. Number two, they are expected to behave positively in all teacher-initiated preparation sessions, those including um, before lunch and after school, and they are encouraged to organize any additional study sessions with their AP peers um, to adequately prepare. Number three, students need to understand the MARC policy of their AP course and the assignment guidelines due dates, and any submissions that will be required throughout the year. 
Number four, students need to understand that their AP course cannot take away from their regular class time and any of the initial assignments associated with the course. Number five, just to reiterate the dates and deadlines, students need to understand that they need to register and make payment by October 2nd for their AP courses. And then finally, students need to notify in writing both guidance and their AP teacher by February 26 if they are choosing no, uh, no longer to write their exams and they would like a partial refund for their courses. And then finally, once again, students need to be aware that they do not have to send their marks to universities, excluding those students who are applying to McGill. Once you have read through those um, points, please take a moment to have your son or daughter sign and then you sign declaring that you understand these points above and then we can move on to the payment section. Each AP course at Crestwood is $225 each and payment will be required before starting in the program. You have the option to pay or excuse me pay by Visa or PayPal here and the order total will be pre-populated for you based on how many courses you added above. Once you've gone through and reviewed all the information to make sure it's all accurate, please take a moment to submit your form and then you will get an email receipt sent both to the student and to the parent or guardian um, email address that was kept on file. After this presentation, students are encouraged to visit the AP College Board website and speak to their potential AP teachers about the courses and exams we offer at Crestwood. Students are also encouraged to speak with their parents or guardians about joining the program and understanding the financial commitment. Students should be visiting the AP group on EDSB daily for reminders and updates. And finally, students should of course submit the online registration by October 2nd to make sure they can secure a spot in the AP program at Crestwood. As this presentation comes to conclusion, I'd just like to leave you now with some helpful resources that you can check out after you've had a chance to watch this video. Number one, I've left you with the AP Student College Board website. This is the main portal where students will be working for the AP course, and it has all of the information listed in this presentation, also on this website. The next link is choosing your AP courses. So here there is a really nice detailed breakdown of all the courses and exams offered through the College Board and just some details about what those courses entail. The third point here is the AP credit policy search. So if you open up this link, you'll be able to look up all of the schools around the world that accept AP credits in their post-secondary destination, and they'll tell you their policy in terms of what courses they accept and what the minimum exam grade they need um, students to produce in order to receive a first year credit. And then finally, I'm going to leave you here with the AP Edsby group link. Students are already auto enrolled in this group but parents are also encouraged to join so they can check out weekly updates, um, important dates, and notifications. Thank you so much for watching this presentation about the AP program at Crestwood. If you have any questions or concerns after viewing this, please do not hesitate to send me an email. My contact information is at the beginning of this presentation. I hope everyone is safe and healthy, and I will see you all soon.